What's up guys and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 4 where we are in the middle of a best of two between Boreal Esports and Not Today. Currently Boreal up 1-0 and well, Not Today they look like they're falling apart because well last game they had one stand in. Now they had two. In a couple of games it will literally not be the same team anymore if this pattern continues but the bans are out. And the picks are commencing. Not today going to take out the Brewmaster Elder Titan. I would say justifiable. For Boreal, they're going to be respecting the Almighty Smash. They're going to take out the Ember Spirit. They're going to take out the Invoker. Don't want anything to do with that. They're going to open up, in fact, Boreal the exact same way they opened up last time. Ogre, Mag Ogre Magi first pick. Troll Warlord second. Whereas for Not Today, they are going to go down. I think this is probably a little bit more of a familiar territory for them. Centaur, War Runner, as well as Marana, at least from what I have seen of them. But keep in mind, because they are running with two stand-ins, this might ne not necessarily be the most common arrangement for Not Today. So, if Not Today make a couple of shuffles in their assignments of heroes and roles, then well, that's not actually going to be too surprising down the line. For right now, though, Marana and Centaur, War Runner, usually one, uh, once Centaur gets Blink, then Hoof Stomp sets up for an arrow, and usually those land, and usually those will get kills. But I'm assuming that Marana is going to be played as a support for now, in which case would benefit quite a bit from a little bit of setup. Scarath Mage is going to be taken out, first of all, just because of the threat of the Scarath Mage Centaur combo, which is just so devastating. Like, you could set up for an arrow with a Hoof Stomp, or you could set up for a Mystic Flare. Which would you rather have? And, uh, well, for not today, Boil, they're not going to be able to ban out, like, both the Vengeful Spirit and and the Shadow Demon. Uh, I guess the the uh, Rubik also is worth a mention, given that Centaur Warrunner is also on the team for not today. So, no matter what, not today are going to be able to get some sort of setup stun for this Marana. And that's really all you need. Like, once you have that, you're usually going to be pretty happy with that. It is kind of more rare nowadays to see Marana being picked up with such high priority. There are many, many games where Marana is just completely overlooked. Uh, you usually would go for her in the second pick phase. You know, pick up something, pick up your Marana combination in the second pick phase, and then that those will just be your support heroes. If you do want to go down the route of a Marana, I don't think she's strong enough for first pick material. I think she could definitely do her job well. However, she needs a lot of help, and it's very much so a hit or miss hero. And... By that I mean your arrows hit or they miss, and then you do well or you don't, depending on what happens. So that is usually what happens when Marana's get picked up. But with Eventual Spirit now picked up by Not Today, you know, it's not the best sort of setup stun just because it doesn't last for that long at level 1, 1 1.45 seconds to land an arrow. That's usually about how long it takes for the arrow to travel. But still, having one stun to set up for another to set up for another is certainly going to be very nice. And well, the ban of Slark is going to prompt Boreal into going for a different hero to lay the hurt into Not Today. It's going to be a Phantom Assassin. This is a little bit more of a Not Today oriented pick if, I w if they were uh, running with their full lineup, of course. But Boreal, they're going to jump right aboard that Ogre Magi train. They have two and a half melee heroes right now. Up against Centaur, they have to be careful about not picking up too many more. But, you know, right now they should be happy with what they have. They have a lot of late game. And that is pretty much the same thing as we saw last. Not Today put themselves on a voluntary timer by picking up the likes of an Axe, who, though can initiate in the late game, is not going to be doing that much damage because everyone's going to be very highly armored. But PA and Troll Warlord, uh, they don't really work the best together. Attack speed on Phantom Assassin is nice, but really you want just damage as Phantom Strike usually is good enough. Regardless, there's going to be a lot of physical damage coming out from Boreal, all being amplified by Bloodlust. Maybe even uh, keep our eyes open for a Mag consideration a little bit down the line. That have Mag, Troll, and Phantom Assassin be the three cores. It's not going to be the easiest for Boreal to run that, but if they make it happen, oh man, things are going to be dying so very easily. Not today. They know what they're up against as far as cores are concerned. They're up against a lot of physical damage. Now, in order to deal with these types of heroes, generally you want to go down the magical route. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Shadow Shaman as the pick for Not Today. It's going to have those uh, those additional wards to do a little bit of pushing power. But Not Today with the Marana Centaur War Runner so far as their dual cores. I mean, they're, they're fine. But when you get into a late game slugfest with Phantom Assassin Troll Warlord as the cores on the other end, Centaur War Runner is certainly outclassed. Marana is certainly outclassed. 
and not today. They're once again on a road to that looks like they're going to want to end the game early. Now, they could go for something like a Razor as their last pick. Still in the pool. Death Prophet is still in the pool as well. But that is not really going to be the hyper carry that they would need if they actually wanted to overpower Boreal in the late game. It might not even be possible that they overpower Boreal in the late game. Uh, in which case, trying to get in underneath the Phantom Assassin Troll Warlord is probably their best bet. Eventual Spirit Shadow Shaman has quite a bit of uh, ganking power in the early stages, like disable into disable, no matter what, you're going to be able to do something with that. And then when you're talking about the follow-up damage and the disables that, and the, uh, the follow-up damage from whoever's, whatever hero you're ganking to's lane, like if it's a Centaur or Marana, that's more than enough damage to get kills on pretty much anybody. So not today, it's going to be up to their supports, and that's something we didn't really see a lot of them in the last game. Mostly because they had a Dazzle Shaker, mostly defensive supports who can't get anything done if they rotate around. So this time out today, we'll have some options. They will be able to, if need be, go around and get kills. And I think it is needed. <laughs> like Phantom Assassin Troll World, if you let them sit too long, then they're just going to run a train over you late game. Boyle, they're going to pick up a little bit more protection. Now with the Ice Armor for Phantom Assassin Troll Warlord, all the physical from Not Today is going to be very heavily stymied. Uh, of course, the Serpent Wards are going to be doing less damage. Marana already doesn't do that much damage. She's going to have to work through Blur as well from Phantom Assassin. And once Phantom Assassin Phantom Strikes to Marana, you have to leap or you die. That's pretty much just the way it goes when you're Marana like, up against a PA. So uh, this already is looking... I would say a little bit better for Boreal. It's going to be 100% up to these supports, not today. And Centaur in this game needs to pick up a fast blink dagger so he can also help out in the aggression. For not today's last pick, they need someone who could just do a ton of damage. They need someone who with who could smash everything. Still Razor, I think, is probably their best bet. Storm Spirit's going to be booted out, as will the Bat Rider. But you know, just Razor to steal damage from Troll Warlord. He attacks very quickly with kind of low-ish damage. And the damage is high enough, but if you manage to drain him out, then he will be completely useless. He'll still be able to bash, and that does some damage, I suppose, but it's probably not going to be all too relevant. So I would expect a Razor pickup from Not Today and send that towards the mid lane to go up against the Troll Warlord. It's not the worst matchup for Troll Warlord, but it's certainly far, far, far from the best. Like, Razor versus Troll, I would say, is probably 90-10 in favor of the Razor. It's probably a little bit better than versus the uh, Templar Assassin, but not by that much. So for not today, they have a couple of powerful options. They just need to take an aggressive slant. They need to, you know, have a here that could put some serious hurt on the Boreal side. And for Boreal, really, they have a lot more flexibility. I like the Batrider ban here, getting rid of Boreal's initiations route, initiation routes. Uh, still, we might be seeing a Mag as their last pick, in which case initiation is going to be not as consistent. It's going to be a lot more committal. And ooh, it's a Broodmother. Hmm. Well, I've only seen Brunrother played once so far in the new patch, guys, from from my casting seat right here. So I don't exactly know that much of how she behaves because, well, the one game I did see when she was picked, she was up against an axe, and uh, I think you guys can figure out what happened there. But Brunrother as the pick. Well, Boreal don't have that much AoE. They have Ignite and Whirling Axes, and that's about it. Frost Blast as well. It's not that much for Broodmother's clearing. Not today. They will not have to worry about ganking into Broodmother's lane. So this is going to switch the focus of Ventral Spirit Shadow Shaman to ganking the entire map to ganking only two lanes. Maybe dip it occasionally into the Broodmother's lane if they really feel like it. But this is a very self-sufficient hero. This is an aggressive hero. And well, <laughs> guys, I said it. I said it and it had to come true, right? And the only times... Man, I really just want to see a Broodmother game where she's not up against an axe. Because I want to see how well she does. Like, this is just a terrible matchup for Broodmother. Like, you can't get much done with your Spiderlings. You have to just full-on jungle with them. And Axe can bring you out of invisibility if he knows at all where you are. Oh, Broodmother's not going to have a good time, guys. Uh, Axe certainly not the hero that I'm pretty sure Boyle expected to pick as their last hero. But Axe with Ice Armor. And that's the initiation route that they needed. A Blink Dagger into a Call onto soft heroes like Venge, Shadow Shaman, Marana, even Broodmother is pretty soft. I gotta say, Boyle, their lineup is looking absolutely terrifying, and not today. It's, I don't know, their lineup is kind of janky. It's capable of pushing down towers sometimes, but a lot of it is going to come down to, as I said, the supports, and well, now even more is going to 
be coming down to this Broodmother pickup. And if the Broodmother just doesn't do anything, well, then she's not going to do anything. And good luck actually doing stuff as the Broodmother. Maybe their best bet is to get favorable lane matchups, but I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to just have to wait and see, guys. It's not today. They're currently down one game in this best of two, so they have to bring it back, else they end up losing 2-0 to Boreal, and that's never the position you want to be in. On the not-today side, we have Smash, who is going to be playing the Broodmother mid-Brood? Ho-ho! Gotta say, guys, this is pretty rare, but, uh, you know, I haven't seen that much Brood, so that's fine. Savage is going to be standing in, playing the Shadow Shaman, as is ours on the Centaur Warrunner, with a sick helmet, by the way. Uh, top lane is going to be Misko heading towards top as the Eventual Spirit, joining Mihawk's Marana. And on the Boreal side, we have Arcana Phantom Assassin, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. However, her portrait's messed up, so I did not realize that. Uh, Phantom Assassin is going to be played by 747. 470 is on the Axe. Loki's going to be playing the Ogre Magi once again. Footsie's on the Lich. What the hell is that Lich hel helmet? Hold on. KVH is going to be on the Troll Warlord again, but... Where did that lich go? Where are you? What the hell? This is like juggernaut stuff. Like seriously, this is not supposed to be lich gear. He has like the whole demon samurai thing going on, like with the teeth. Like this is a very Japanese thing for the lich. And I don't really know like what the lich's lore is because I'm sure I've read it before, but I don't remember it. But I'm pretty sure you would be more likely to see this on the juggernaut than lich. It's just so weird. And they're like not even the same. Like they're not similar heroes at all so i don't know anyway mid lane it's going to be axe versus broodmother so for smash his spiderlings are going to be of limited usefulness to put that lightly his jungling route i mean he could clear out this camp this camp is a little bit more difficult uh this camp is equally as difficult and if you could send them north into the enemy jungle he might be able to clear this one but hard camps are usually off the table and centaurs are spawning in both of them and smash already is dare i say getting smashed by 470. Good luck, Broodmother. You're desperately going to need it. And for not today, they're just going to run straight up dual lanes. I mean, this is definitely not exactly the best case scenario to be in. First of all, Centaur Warrunner and the uh, and the Shadow Shaman, it's not the worst by any means, but with a double damage Lich on the other end, it's going to be pretty deadly. And Phantom Assassin will be able to jump in at the drop of a hat, and it's certainly not going to be aiming towards ours. The uh, the goal is going to be go towards that Shadow Shaman, go for the soft meat, and with the damage that they have, they will be more than able to bring him down. So this is a dangerous lane from both sides, but as long as Phantom Assassin keeps her distance away from the Shadow Shaman, she should be just fine. Over towards the top lane, Troll Warlord, Range Hero, Loki, Melee Hero, it would, I guess, put them at a disadvantage versus the double melee of a uh, double range rather of not today. However, you have to remember that Ventral Spirit Marana, they need a clear line of sight if they're actually going to get the kill. If their magic missile arrow combination doesn't land, then it's very unlikely that anyone is going to die here from Boreal. And uh, well, with such a cluttered lane with just two heroes running around all the time, and well, bottom lane Savage is going to be jumped upon. Slifling Dagger cooling down. It's going to skewer Shadow Shaman right in the back. He has boots, but certainly not going to be useful enough for him. Chase him down. Stab him. There we go. 747 is going to draw first blood on the Shadow Shaman down towards bottom. And I expect that to be more or less par for the course. As these heroes, uh, I mean, well, Shadow Phantom Assassin versus Shadow Shaman, first of all, is not that fun for Shadow Shaman. And Centaur can never always be near his Shadow Shaman friend. It's just not possible. A top lane, uh, not today. They need clear line of sight, and with so many heroes just fumbling around, it's very unlikely that that's going to be the case. So I would say Boreal have three out of three of their lanes with an advantage. Uh, with top lane probably being the uh, the most balanced, especially given the death on the bottom lane. So ordinarily, I would say bottom lane probably the most fragile for Boreal. But after getting that first blood, they're going to be feeling much better about their chances. Mid lane is just I mean, it's just not going to be fun. Broodmother's not doing too terribly with her last hitting is when her last hitting is concerned. But 470, he already has sentries on the floor. He's going to be going just maxed out call, maxed out counter helix, and things are going to be uh, blended up very, very well. 470 is going to be able to clear out all of these spiders and smash. Just even if he doesn't actually die to these counter helix spins, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. Top lane arrow is going to be set up, but it will miss. KVH now going to turn around onto Misko. They're not doing enough damage. However, now here comes the damage. KVH and Loki so very tanky. They will take down one kill up on top. Loki's being chased by the Marana. One more hit should do it with the leap forward. No, two more hits will do it. 
And of oh, juking into the trees. Now Salve as well. Fire Blast turn around. Ignite is there as well. Mihawk is going to go down. Point blank arrow lands, but that's not gonna be enough. That's a two for one. Up on the top lane, whereas towards bottom, it looks like the Lich got jumped by Savage, barely managing to escape out from that one. At least not today get something out of that one, but still top lane is just not the lane that they want to be fighting in. This is an ogre match I were talking about. This dude has seven armor. And Marana, how much damage does she actually do? She does like crap for damage. It's not exactly fun times for her. Even with the Vengeful Spirit behind her, who does do a little bit more than crap. It's actually like crap plus three. Actually, no, it's crap minus three. It's even worse. So these are not high damage heroes from not today. It's mostly in their combination where they're going to be getting traction. And good luck getting traction with that combination when you're already down two kills. The Boreal, they have the top lane pretty much on lockdown. Again, their bottom lane has to be very, very careful as a shackle into a anything is going to be putting a serious amount of hurt onto the enemy. Oh, Misko is going to get caught with a call up towards top. 470 has a haste rune. He's gonna, just going to chase down this Vengeful Spirit. In the meantime, KVH is also going to go down. Mihawk not getting hit with any spins or anything like that. So it's a one for one trade up towards top. Not the trade that Boreal really want to be making. However, down towards bottom, maybe they want to make this trade. No, not quite. Centaur is going to force 747 away and will be just fine. In the meantime, because of the axe rotation towards the top lane, I guess you could call that a success for the axe, but not a success for the team. He's going to have his tower push, and that's pretty much just Broodmother doing Broodmother things. If you leave her alone for a single second, you're going to take a lot of damage in the tower, and it looks like this time it's going to be them outright losing the tower. It's going to be destroyed by the Broodmother, and that's going to help out her laning situation so, so much. Now Broodmother, I mean, she still has to worry about this sentry this century there we go but when you have all this space to work with like look how much flexibility broodmother has she could go any of these places and have a lot more play around against that axe and that's going to mean that she's going to have such a better time in the mid lane still she's vulnerable to dying if she gets called with a whole bunch of her spiders so many spins could kill her off but uh it's less likely now that she has so much room to play with top lane loki's going to hit with an arrow magic missile as well mihawk looking for some stars but he's going to get fire blasted and ignited He's going to unleash some stars, but it will be too late. Loki is going to get shot down in the end, and Marana actually is going to burn on the low ground. Troll Warlord now in a 1v2, has the axe incoming for support, and Misko really can't get hit by any of these whirling axes, else she would just outright die. Here comes the axe with the whirling axes slow. Misko is so freaking dead right now. He's going to try to go for the decapitate, but unfortunately for the axe, Hellbear's proc to counter helix, and he got a kill a different way. It's not going to matter in the end because a kill is a kill but just not as stylish so minus points for the axe or i guess minus points for the hell bear boo no one likes seeing that bottom lane though uh, they were training a couple hits here and there but looks like that is pretty much died down at the end of the day it's gonna be boreal taking a slight kill lead in this game smash is actually holding on to quite a bit of gold hasn't bought anything no bottle or anything like that and Really? Did that just happen? Am I watching this correctly? Ours is going to try to go for Footsie, but here comes the Phantom Assassin. Stampede is there, and Footsie and now 747 both going to get stunned up with a shock from the high ground. Footsie is going to drop as the Phantom Assassin just bails on out of there. Here comes here comes Loki. He's going to try to put some damage into this Ogre Magi, but it's certainly not enough with 747 being at such low amounts of HP. That will just be a clean kill. And on top lane, KVH being chased down. Magic Missile Arrow will set up for a kill up towards top. It's going to be two kills now for Not Today. Catching Boreal in the wrong place at the wrong time lich with no boots what has he been spending his money on i don't know but he certainly is pretty darn poor so this guy can't really do much when he's right on top of a centaur stampede honestly wasn't needed if you wanted to get the stun on the lich but hey getting a stun onto two is just that much better so it's going to be five six now boreal with only one kill advantage but uh, they're still doing pretty decently because 40, uh, 470 very close to his blink dagger. Once he has that, Broodmother's got to be so careful with where she sends her spiderlings. As wherever they go, it's probably even going to be worth it for Axe just to blink call them just to get gold. Like, that's going to be what, at least 100 gold for a call. Sounds pretty good to me. And if, like, there's this many spiderlings or even more, then suddenly you're looking at 200 gold, and that's pretty much the tower. So that's what you get if you are Axe. You're going to be able to collect big. And also on, along the same line, 747 going to go for a Battle Fury in this game. It's, uh, you know, not an item that you want to go for all the time as Phantom Assassin, but up against the Broodmother, you definitely want to have that cleave. That is going to give you just so much value, and it's going to be insane for farming gold. Top lane, Mihawk's going to be jumped by Loki. There is a leap, and Mihawk's looking for it. However, Fire Blast still being held. Jump over the trees, and it looks like it'll be Phantom Assassin to get the kill onto Savage in the meantime. Bottom lane, my apologies for missing that one, but KVH is being chased down now by Broodmother. A couple of spiders here as well. Whirling Axe is going to clear out those spiders, 
And now Sentry has dropped. Smash does not know about this yet, but he will fall back regardless. It looks like that will be a clean escape, but next time it won't be as lucky as 470 now has his blink. So a couple kills being traded here and there. Uh, it's going to be Savage to drop in the end. 747 now 2-0. He is just most likely going to finish up his Battle Fury, grab the two swords, then upgrade his boots, and then just be happy to be regret. Never mind. He's going to upgrade his boots first of all. And then he's going to get his Battle Fury a little bit down the line. And the sequencing doesn't really matter a huge amount as Phantom Assassin isn't completely reliant on the... B uh, the battle fury to get farm like the anti-mage is they're gonna try to go for ours trying to poke at him oh he's gonna put himself down dangerously low oh that could have been very very bad 747 if he was a little bit luckier with the crit or if he decided to just man up and phantom strike in dead centaur right there but luckily for him he gets to survive in the meantime top lane loki is going to be poked at by an invisible moron so he now knows what kind of situation he's in arrows available but loki doesn't want to fight not yet he needs more backup kvh is going to be coming around from the side where's the axe he's going to come around blink across the trees no he's going the wrong direction now he's going to join the fight but he gets stunned up in the process mihawk to be chased down by kvh i think this marana should most likely be fine 470 also already is the blink so he cannot continue chasing kvh looking for more whirling axes will land one couple hits that'll be the death of the marana now 470 blinking in as well can't really do too much else to help out but it's still one kill going the way of Boyle, and looks like that should just about be it. What the hell is that noise? That was just so weird. Runes at the same time, I suppose. And that smash over towards mid is going to be pushing that one out, but here comes Axe, and Smash is going to be so careful. He doesn't get caught with any of his spiders, but doesn't matter, because a couple of beatdown hits and a frost blast and Fussy's going to get the kill. Spiders are still alive, but I mean, that's going to be the Broodmother going down just to an Axe. It's pretty much the broodmother effect right there. You push, you push, you push, you feel pretty good about yourself until you get jumped by an axe, and you're like, wait, maybe I shouldn't have been pushing that far. In the meantime, up towards top lane, Ogre Magic looking for one more fire blast and a misco, one more whack, bam! There's a kill on the Vengeful Spirit for the axe. Boyle taking a couple of kills, returning the favor that not today have been dealing to them a couple of times in the past. And they are looking just so great in this game. Boyle, broodmother actually on top of the net worth chart, even with her really bad lane opponent. She's finding a lot of farm because the axe is moving around a lot more than Smash has. Has moved once down towards the bottom lane to help out there. But aside from that, the Broodmother's contributions have been relatively limited. Uh, in the in the side lanes, of course. She's been sticking down towards mid. But the axe has been moving around a hell of a lot. And now under the cover of smoke, he's going to move around once more. It is going to be for a centaur. And how do you like your horse steaks? I'm pretty sure horse isn't good to eat because it's like so tough. But... Yeah, we'll see, because he's going to be jumped on and blended. Unless you get, like, no... Unless you get no procs at all. Footsie's going to be shackled in the sidelines. They will get the kill on Centaur in the end. 470 taking quite a bit of damage. Magic Whistle going to come through, and he's going to give his life as well. And that's going to be a two-for-one down towards bottom. You expect at least one. Up top lane, Mihawk is going to be beaten down, so I guess it's a two-for-two -two trade. But maybe not. 747 is going to be just fine as well. Never mind. But you expect at least one spin when you jump in. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the 20% chance is just 0% chance, and it's lying to you the entire time. If they got one spin, easy centaur kill. But instead, it's going to be a turnaround, as not today. Bring in the cavalry, and they bring it in in a big way. Unfortunately for Boreal, they find kills elsewhere. Dropping your axe for a Marana is not the trade that Boreal really want to be making, especially when they also lose a tier, two tower, tier 1 rather in the process. But you know what? It could be a lot worse for Boreal since they get a tier 1 tower as well. So it's even trade. However, they have to be careful about this mid lane push. They know that there's Moonlight Shadow and Axe. He is way ready and waiting. I think just calling this would be fine. Like, I would be more than happy to do that. And 470 agrees with me. Look at the money fly. He's going to get shackled, but this is a trap. Chain Frost is going to be thrown. There's nothing to absorb this Chain Frost. Already the Shadow Shaman is going to go down. Miss Code caught in the corner is going to be quick to fall as well. Smash is going to be dusted. He will get himself down to the Roshan pit. Roshan, please don't be like that to smash. That is just mean. It's going to be a two for one as Boyle spring the trap. And still the very fragile heroes of not today. I feel like also falling into that, uh, falling into the broodmother effect. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. When you are pushing and you're kind of like high on life and you're like, okay, we're going to do everything because we just took a tower. And then you overextend and die. 
That, from now on, is called the Broodmother Effect, and that might just be what's happening to Mihawk right now. Well, maybe not. He's going to get some help from ours, stampeding as well to get that Marana out of there. Shock as well as Arrow going to fly through, but 470 is going to survive for now. KVH is, meantime, going to be held out, but it's not going to be enough to kill him off. Swapped now back by Misko. Fussy's going to take a lot of damage, as will KVH, but so far, it's only the Axe to die. No Smash is going to get a double kill. Came back from killing the Axe, throwing some more Spiderlings. Now going to look towards Loki. Misko does not have any follow-up, however, unless Loki turns around. Magic Missile is there, and now Smash's damage onto Loki will be huge. The Orchid will pop him off if nothing else but the spiders get the kill 470 gonna land a nice two-man call centaurs jump gonna jump in but there's lots of broodlings here 470 needs a wide berth right now gonna throw some dust smash is now completely revealed 470 just needs a calling blade but he can't quite reach him the spiders canceling his blink dagger he's gonna call one more time but the double edge from ours is going to kill him off that's gonna be four for one in the middle lane not today collect so huge as Boreal, they just like get vastly outnumbered at the wrong place at the wrong time. 747 is going to make it slightly better for the team as he catches Centaur Warrunner on the retreat. But still, my god, that was just disastrous for Boreal. They were just, you know, first of all, trying to go for Mirana, and that didn't happen. I don't believe Mirana went down. Did she die? Broodmother? No, they just, yeah, Boreal just got. Yeah, they just got outvalued right there. There were just so many stuns. The spiders did so much damage. The broodmother was running around uninterrupted, and that really should not be happening, quite honestly, for Boreal. Though they are kind of low on stuns, the axe just was you know, a little bit out of his depth there. Needed to save a stun for Smash, because with that incapacitating bite, as well as the insatiable hunger, he was just doing so much damage. Not even to mention the spiderling army, not even to mention the orchid. Things are really out of hand for Boreal there really quickly. And not today. Take a massive team fight. That being said, is it going to be enough? Because they are still technically behind in the net worth. They are still technically behind in the experience. They could take a 4 for a 0 fight like that and still be behind because of the momentum that Boreal have and the team comp they have as well. Mihawk's going to get jumped over towards mid. Instant swap out from Misko. Going to stun at 747. Try to buy a little more space for this Moran. Moonlight Shadow is there, but Dust is blown 470. All of a sudden, he's all alone. He has to get the hell out of here because here comes the Orchid. Incapacitating Bite, Insatiable Hunger. Axe is not going to hit with the arrow, but he will go down anyway. 747 will be able to survive. But holy crap, this Broodmother is doing so much freaking damage. Plus 80 from Insatiable Hunger. And she's actually a pretty potent right-clicker. This is not really what we see that often from Broodmothers. You know, of course, when she was back in Captain's Mode as her old incarnation. But this is still a hero that is going around and ganking things and pushing. Like, this is not how you're supposed to be playing Broodmother. This is very rarely how we see Broodmother being played just because usually you want to stick into one lane and just push that endlessly but when she's going around with insatiable hunger she gets kills now speaking of she's going to go for loki towards mid silence the kvh as well stars are going to fall kill off the ogre magi long range magic missile setting up for an arrow over towards mid and kvh is going to get beaten down uh spiderlings smash is going to get yet another kill for himself this is the ganking broodmother this is very very rarely seen but maybe it's uh you know message of things to come in the future where Broodmother can afford to have a little bit more flexibility with her webs, and that's really all you need in order to get some serious value. Once she has BKB, I mean, Axe will still f be able to call through that uh, that BKB, but it's going to be very difficult for him, as now we see towards mid, Smash going to decide to 1v2. Not a good idea. The Broodmother effect. It's a thing, guys. It's certainly a thing. I'm going to patent this shit. He's going to try to lifesteal it out, but Chain Frost and a Dunk. I mean, a little bit unnecessary, maybe, but that was that was pretty much Exhibit A of the Broodmother effect. You're feeling good, but all of a sudden, you're Broodmother, and you forget that you only have, like, a thousand HP or something, and you forget that there's an axe on the field, and you're suddenly with your spidlings, and then you're dead. And that's the story of the Broodmother effect. I'm going to publish a paper, and you guys, you better not steal my idea, because I'll, I'll come for you if you do. Off of that kill, Boreal, they're going to go straight into the Roshan pit. With the Battle Trance now active, this Roshan not going to last long at all. Not today. What trade do they have in sight? Top lane maybe is going to drop. The Spiderlings are going to scout this. Best case scenario, they get a deny. You hero Spiderite. Nah, I, wasn't, I wasn't very hopeful for that Spiderite, but you know, there's always the chance. There's always the dream. Not as much so with the Battle Fury on the Vandom Assassin, but it's going to be Roshan for Boreal. They're going to lose their top lane tower in exchange. This is actually the first drop of the Serpent Wards, I believe, from the Shadow Shaman. Going to get a tier 1 a little bit late. I mean, he's already, le already level 9. It's You want to drop that as soon as you hit level 6, but it's not going to matter too much in the long run, I don't think. It's going to be Boreal feeling pretty good about themselves still, now because they have the Aegis, and also they still are working with an Axe, which is you know, he's still probably the most terrifying hero in the game. But not today. They're more than happy to fight this out. 
They are going to jump in for a two-man hoof stomp. First of all, Call's going to connect only onto ours. Has a stampede as well, but he can't get it off because he's chain stunned. Now they're going to go straight onto Misko. He's going to be torn to shreds. Now onto Mihawk as well. Nope, KVH taking a little bit too much damage. He's going to back off. Shock is going to land. And the what that killed him, I don't know, but he's going to lose the Aegis. Ours. That's a buyback from this one, and Savage is going to be jumped upon one more time. Going to get the Hex on the 747, but KVH in the meantime going to shred the Ogre, or Ogre Magic, going to shred the Centaur Warrior with the help of KVH. Now they're on to Mihawk. You throw an arrow, which will connect on the 470, but he's just too tanky. He's going to survive all of that and TP out to safety, but in the meantime, Smash is being Broodmother. You have to remember that this is Broodmother we're talking about, guys, and he's going to take a Tier 3. He's also going to put some serious hurt into the Range Raxes. Oh my god, is he actually going to get it? There's only one hero here to defend. It is going to be 470, but he blinks into a silence from the Orchid. There's no insatiable hunger up from Smash, so he can't quite get this kill. He's going to be just short. Now here comes 747. It's going to be a 2 for 1. That Smash is not going to be able to win. He gives his life. He might take down the Range Raxes, though. There's still a couple of Spider Links here. They need Hunter Helixes. They need Cleave, but Range Raxes are going to fall. Bori will take a fantastic fight over towards mid, but is it enough? Because they just got Broodmothered, guys. That is, you know part B of the Broodmother effect right there. You forget you're up against Broodmother and all of a sudden you're flooded with spiders and you're going to be losing structures. That damage that Broodmother put out was absolutely insane and in Boyle taking a nice team fight as nice as that is, it's not as good as, you know, keeping up your structures. It's just not good enough. So not today. Their Broodmother is just running this game right now. Smash is Brood. I mean, I knew his Ember was a thing. I knew his Invoker was a thing. I did not quite know that his Broodmother was a thing. But it seems like the roaming, ganking Broodmother is actually working out pretty well for him. Now completing up the BKB. And the rest of his team isn't doing terribly. But they definitely pale in comparison to the contributions that the Broodmother has been making. Like the stuns and the swaps, they've been all doing their job. But, man, just kind of underwhelming. Smash in the meantime, he's going to get dusted. Has a BKB, so he's more than happy to play a couple games now with Boreal. Especially trying to just bait them into a centaur. And here comes said centaur. Long TP though. My god, what happened there? Loki still on the run. Might be fine. He doesn't have a TP. Yeah, they guess wrong. Loki's going to be fine. But in the meantime, mid lane. Serpent Wards dropped. And Boreal. What is their response? They have an axe here, but that's it. An axe cannot clear out Serpent Wards very well. So this tower is going to drop one way or another. Arrow's going to fly through onto KVH. Here comes the minus armor magic missile as well. Axe is going to call in only to Misko though. KVH taking quite a bit of damage. Needs a shock from long range. Not quite going to happen. Tower is going to drop. In the meantime, this the uh, Broodmother also dies. Swap back into a double edge. Will kill off the Troll Warlord in the end. Rainbow of TP is coming in. Stampede is there though. From not today, they're going to try to kill off 470. But a Chain Frost is out. Misko is going to be obliterated by that. On to ours now is 747 as well as that Chain Frost. Stomp is going to disengage a little bit. But not quite enough as 470 does catch Mihawk on the retreat. Calling through that invisibility. will get the kill in the end. Now Savage as well. He's dusted up, but he will straight TP out of there. Don't exactly... Wait, what happened? Centaur Warrunner also died. Wait, what? Axe was right there. I, I've... Okay, I, I'm crazy, apparently. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry, guys. But Boreal take another good fight. This time, starting things off with a pick off on the Broodmother. Again, I don't really know what happened down there. I'm assuming just called into multicasted or something like that. But either way... It's going to be Boreal taking a favorable trade, and now they might actually be able to translate that into some sort of structural damage. Phantom Assassin, she has been farming this entire time. Like, even though not today have taken a set of range raxes, that is nice for 21 minutes, but it's not a death sentence. It's certainly easy for Boreal to deal with this, given the fact that they have Axe on their team, they have a Troll Warlord on the team, and they also have a Phantom Assassin on the team. And PA worst case scenario, or uh, Troll Warlord rather, worst case scenario you need to buy a maelstrom and that's actually a pretty good item on troll but i mean this is going to happen for the rest of the game 747 is going to be able to clean out this creep wave very very easily with the help of battle fury and also kill off all the spiderlings in the process boreal though they do have a range racks down they still have firm control of this game because the only relevant hero for not today is that brood mother and though she has a bkb she's not able to just 1v5 once the battle trances out, once the call cuts through that BKB, and once Phantom Assassin's right on top of that brood, we have to remember that Phantom Assassin also is working with Blur. So MKBs are going to be a necessity for both the Brood Mother as well as the Phantom Assassin. Like you gotta remember that also incapacitating bite gives you that mischance of something 40, you know, 60%. That's pretty broken. So you gotta get an MKB if you are going to look to do some physical damage, but for right now, Boreal, their base is being pushed. They're gonna take down the bottom tier one. Looks like for free. But uh, this split pushing from not today is pretty intense. That's something that Broodmother does pretty much better than most, as she'll be able to cut several ways at the same time. And I think it might be time for Boyle to consider a 
gem of true sight. Uh, they have sentries. They've been very good about buying dust. In fact, they have a hell of a lot of it. But at a certain point, just getting a gem to surprise the broodmother once can snowball you into a tower or something like that. But even if Boreal just stay the course, even if they're not looking for these kills, they're still having a Phantom Assassin with quite a bit of net worth. Like, she has a Yasha, she's got the Battle Fury, so she's farming very quickly, almost hitting that Anti-Mage status, although not quite. Uh, I don't think the next item is going to be fully committed into the Sanjin Yasha. Honestly, it doesn't quite matter what she wants to go for. BKB would help out amazingly well. 4747. We have a selfless fight up towards top. Footsie's gonna get initiated upon by ours. Arrow's gonna snipe out the Lich, and Savage is also gonna blink forward for KVH. Ward's going to drop. Iron Range of the Tower. Swap back. KVH is going to break that lasso somehow, but he's going to be beaten down regardless with a big hit from that double edge. 747 now into the fight, but he doesn't have a BKB. Can't afford to fight as R is gonna land it. Another hoof stomp. Where's the magic missile? Not quite there, but an arrow is there to chain stun him perfectly. That's gonna be three kills for not today. In the meantime, mid lane, Brun rather gets jumped by Axe and the Ogre Magi once again, making it a two for three overall still some wards firing on the top lane tower but i don't quite know if not today have enough power in order to take this spoil they're coming but it looks like they're going to be a little bit too late yeah they're a little bit out of range so tower though it's going to be fortified is now guaranteed to die one way or another and it should be mihawk to take it there we go so boreal taking out the brood mother over towards the mid lane going to give them you know a little bit more space to deal with not that hero but their Phantom Assassin ran into a pretty severe problem right there. She is farmed as hell, but she doesn't have the right type of items to go up against those heroes. If she had a BKB, that would have been easily two kills for Phantom Assassin, unless they TP'd out, which, you know, it would have been, you know, a win for Phantom Assassin, let's say. But because she doesn't have a BKB, because she's not going for a BKB, she's not able to take those types of fights. There's just way too much stunning and control from the Not Today side. Magical damage as well. So even though the evading the crowd control is going to be nice it's mostly just the magical damage of not today's skills that are doing most of the hurt for the phantom assassin so she needs that item she decided instead to go for a manta style it's not the worst answer i mean it certainly is going to help her survive but this is only like a half measure it's like you could go for a manta style and try to survive or you could go get a bkb and be guaranteed to survive make your own choice mihawk is going to be jumped up towards the top he's going to find himself a nice little hidey hole though is he going to live? Place your bets. Mid lane is going to be jumped. Call in onto Smash. Once again, the Phantom Assassin is here. The loss of damage Smash will be decapitated. Centaur, in the meantime, is going to try to stampede away, but Savage is not going to be fast enough. He is going to be brought down as well. Now it's on to ours. Looking for a blink call. However, they overshoot him by just a little bit. And guys, whoever betted Morana was going to die, congratulations, you win. I don't know what you win, but I'm sure we will get you some sort of pat on the back or high five sometime in our lifetime here on Hefla TV. But there is no guarantees there. There is nothing guaranteed at all here. Uh, it's going to be Boreal taking a couple kills here and there. It's going to be three for zero overall. Now straight on to the mid tier two. And with the Battle of Trans, this tower is going to drop in quite the hurry. Top lane also going to be dropping very quickly as well. Troll doing a lot of damage there with the help of Lich. That's going to be three kills and two towers for Boreal. Roshan timer up in about a minute. So they have to preoccupy themselves for that time. But man, are they going to preoccupy themselves? This is going to be an Aghanim Scepter for the Ogre Magi. Axe has his finished Crimson Guard with another 2,500 gold in the boot. KVH once again has his Blink Dagger. Same as last game. And the Phantom Assassin is all the way up to 2,100 gold. Ancient stack status, there are none. But that doesn't actually mean that much considering how much Phantom Assassin is farming up right now. BKB should be the next item, and that should be more or less the best item for 747. Conversely, on the Not Today side, actually, wow, Misko actually has a lot. That's very surprising how much this Vengeful Spirit has. Like, she has Power Treads, Medallion, Vit Booster. She's pretty tanky. And Shadow Shaman has a Blink Dagger as well. So these are, you know, lots of nice items to have on Not Today, but just not enough nice items, and the items that they have aren't as nice as they really have to be. What the hell is this sword doing here? Rest for the wicked. Poor guy. Looks like ours was, uh, yeah. Are these swords just, like, everywhere? Because I haven't noticed them before. Yeah, it's been a while since I played, guys. I don't know the Phantom Assassin Arcana event. I should not everyone's complaining about it. I'm sorry. I'm ignorant. 
But for 7, he's going to find 2. Mihawk is now revealed. Can be decapitated. No, he's silenced instead. So it's going to be the old, good old fashioned beatdown. KVH now going to stunlock smash. R is going to try to snipe at 470, but he gets called onto 3, actually. 470 is not going to be able to save his troll warlord. Now he's going to be walked down. I mean, that was a lot of not today heroes up in the top lane very, very quickly. And Boreal, thinking they had enough to kill off that Mirana, I suppose they were right, but costed them quite a bit in the end. Not today. Their Broodmother is not quite healthy enough to go with the push, though. And they have to worry about bottom lane. Phantom Assassin with Manta Style can push this one out very, very quickly as well. So, not today. They're going to try to get what the, whatever they can get, but I don't quite know if that's going to be significant enough. Mid lane, top lane, both in danger. And where is it going to be? Don't really know. I mean, not today. They're slow pushing everywhere, but they're, they have no axe to worry about. There should be something for them. Okay, it's going to be Roshan. That's good, too. They end up losing the tier 2 tower down towards bottom. Now, 7047. He's making a beeline for this Roshan pit. Though, I don't think this is with the intention of killing Roshan or checking Roshan. It's with the intention of going back to his base. And if he does run into these heroes, he's going to be in for a very, very rude awakening. Although, Roshan is already dead, so I guess not. Aegis on Broodmother now, and, well, if there's ever a time to push, this should be it. 1,000 crit from Brood, uh, from Phantom Assassin at this point. Of course, Phantom Assassin doesn't actually do as much as advertised, but it's still a hell of a lot of damage with the main one. Footsie and Loki are going to be charging forward. They're going to run straight into Smash. Instantly, the Orc is there. BKB as well from Smash. R is going to look for a stomp, but he jumps right into a call. Now he's going to be brought down before anything else. Smash is taking quite a bit of damage, even with that BKB. Due to all the physical, now the BKB is down. Chain Frost still bouncing through. We'll be dragged away by Mihawk, but... Broodmother is now all alone. Sentry wards are freaking everywhere. And Smash is not going to stand up for very long. Boil clean house. Even with getting Loki initiated like that, it is an Ogre Magi. That's what happens when you try to go for Ogre. And that was unfortunate initiation by the Centaur. Like, that would have been a hoof stomp onto three. That would have made the fight so much cleaner for not today. But unfortunately, he jumped right into a call. Was unable to get that hoof stomp out. And that's just going to be GG. Not today. They've had enough. They know that they can't. They most likely cannot defend this bottom lane, so Boreal are going to be winning the series, guys, 2-0. Honestly, I did not expect this to be the result going into this, but at the same time, oh, at the same time, not today, I have something else to do. So there's that. Maybe they were uh, playing a little bit more desperate than they really wanted to be. Also, they were running with a couple of stand-ins. But I'm not going to take any of this away from Boreal. They played fantastically. KVH's Troll Warlord was on point the in for both of these games. Their support cast was doing quite a bit as well. So, well played to Boreal. Going to take the series 2-0 over Not Today. And that should be it for Hefla TV 2 here, guys. Uh, hold on. Okay, um... I think there might be more games. I'm not sure when or where, but I will update you on the wait screen or something like that, guys. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that follow button. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Hefla TV. I'm Mike Loris. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Loris. If you enjoyed the cast, and if you didn't, well, we're always open to criticism. If you think you can do better, then hell, you might as well apply and then join us because you can't beat us. Join us, right? That's what they say, guys. That's going to be it for us here. We might be going for more on this channel. Might be on Hefla TV 1. I will host this channel wherever it is relevant. Thanks for watching, guys. And that's going to be it. GG.